Okay, we got to fields. At the beginning of this section, I gave you a brief explanation of fields. A field is like a variable that we declare at the class level, and we use that to store data about the class. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about a couple of different ways to initialize fields, and then I'll talk about the concept of read-only fields. So in the last lecture, you saw me declaring a class called customer, which had a list of orders. And you also saw how I initialized that field using the default or the parameterless constructor. While this approach is perfectly fine, there is also another school of thought when it comes to initializing fields. Some developers believe we should use constructors only when we need to initialize our fields based on the values passed from the outside. So in this case, we are initializing the orders field without any external values. The constructor, as you see here, has no parameters. So in situations like that, there is another way to initialize the orders field. And that looks like the code you see here. So we can directly initialize the orders field without the need to create a constructor. This approach has an extra benefit, and that is we can have multiple constructors, and no matter which one is called, the orders field will always be initialized to an empty list. We'll explore that later when we start coding. Okay, now let's take a look at read-only fields. We can declare a field with the read-only modifier to make sure that that field is only assigned once. So in that case, that field has to be initialized either directly like the slide you see here or in one of the constructors of the class. You might wonder why do we need something like that? The reason is to create some kind of safety in our application to improve robustness. For example, take a look at this customer class here. By declaring the orders field as read only, I'll make sure that we'll only have one list where we will keep the list of orders. If I accidentally, as a developer, try to reinitialize this field in another method, the data that we had in the field will not be lost. It's easier to explain that using an example. So let's start coding and see these concepts in action. Okay, let's start by creating a customer class. So public class customer. Now let's declare a couple of fields. So public int id, public string name. We can also create an order class. Public class order. I'm going to leave the implementation of this class for now. We don't really need it for this example. All we need to do is to create a list of orders and the customer. So public list of order. Now let's declare a couple of constructors for this class. So CTOR. The first one may get just an ID. So this the ID equals ID. The second one is going to get an ID and a name. And just to recap what we learned in the constructors lecture, we can use the this keyword here. And instead of repeating the initialization of the ID, like the code you see here, we can delegate the control to this constructor here. So I'm just going to use the this keyword, pass the ID. At this point, this constructor will be called. So the ID will be initialized based on what we get here. And then here, I can say this.name equals name. Now, if you remember from the lecture about constructors, I explained why we need to initialize these orders to an empty list. Just to recap, whenever you have a class like customer, and inside that class, you have a list, you should always initialize that list to an empty list. Now, the technique I showed you in that lecture was to create a default constructor, like the one here, and set the orders to an empty list like here. This approach is perfectly fine. But there is a slight problem with that, and that is if you use any of these constructors here, so this one or this one, we have to make sure that the default constructor is always called first, so the orders field will be initialized. Some developers argue and say, no, we shouldn't initialize fields like the orders here because orders is not dependent on any parameters from the outside. So what we can do is we can get rid of this constructor 
and initialize the orders field here. This way, no matter which constructor is going to be called, the orders field will always be initialized to an empty list. Some developers do not like this approach because they don't like the idea of initializing some of the fields here while declaring them versus initializing the others in the constructors. It's entirely up to you. It's more a personal taste. I wanted to show you both approaches so you know what is possible. The approach you choose is up to you. But what I want to emphasize to you is to be consistent with your approach. Make sure you use the same approach everywhere. This way your code would be cleaner. Okay, now let's move on and look at read-only modifier. So here, I want to declare a method. Let's call it promote. And the intention is this method will promote this customer to a gold customer. I'm going to leave the implementation here. Let's just put some comment. But I want to show you a mistake that I as a developer can accidentally make. Let's say if I accidentally reinitialize these orders here, what would happen? So what I'm going to do is to clean up our code, I'm going to put this customer class in a separate file. So cursor here, I explained this earlier. So with resharper, alt and enter and enter again. Now this class ended up in a separate file. So that file is customer.cs. Now we go back to program. We can do the same with the order class. Back to the program. Now the code is cleaner. Let's create a customer object. So var customer equals new customer. We're expected to supply an ID and or a name because we don't have a default or parameterless constructor. So look, here we've got two constructors. I'm going to use the first one. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to add two orders to this customer. So customer dot orders dot add new order. And let's just copy paste this line. So at this point, if I display the number of orders the customer has, we should see two on the console. So let's quickly do that. Customer dot orders dot count. Let's run the application. So we got two on the console. Now let me show you something. Imagine here, we make a call to the promote method. This method, because of a bug, accidentally reinitialized the orders field. So now if we run the application, all the data that we had in the orders field is lost. We have zero. This is where you use the read only modifier. So let's go back to the customer. If there are situations where you know that this field should be initialized only once, that's where you decorate that with the read only modifier. This way, if you accidentally reset that field in the code, you're going to get a compile time error. First of all, we can immediately see this error here by the red underline. It says read only field cannot be used as an assignment target. So if you don't see the red error when you compile the application, you're definitely going to see that. So a read only field cannot be assigned to accept in a constructor or a variable initializer. So what this means is this line is not acceptable and we can only initialize a read only field either here directly when we are declaring that or in the constructor. So read-only is one of the ways that you can improve the robustness of your application. That's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Hi guys, Mosh here. I hope you're having a fantastic day or night wherever you are in the world. This tutorial you have been watching is actually part of one of my C Sharp courses where you will learn everything about classes, interfaces, and object-oriented programming. In case you're interested to enroll in the full course, I've put the link for you in the video description. And if not, that's perfectly fine. Have a great day.